Our next speaker is Jean Swanson. Uh, Jean is a longtime anti-poverty activist living and working in Vancouver. She works with the uh, Carnegie Community Action Project, an organization dedicated to the welfare of the downtown east side, as well as a founder of In Legislative Poverty, a British Columbia coalition aim, aiming at educating and organizing in order to make governments reduce and end poverty. Jean is also the author of the widely cited Poor Bashing, The Politics of Exclusion. Jean? Hi, everybody. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I work at CAP for more and better housing, higher incomes, and to stop gentrification. And um, Tristan asked me to talk about why we need a social housing coalition. I think pretty much that's basically what everybody's been talking about so far. Um, I, I particularly like to focus on uh, social housing for low-income people because the poverty rate in Vancouver is 26.6%. So... Um, this is a situation as I see it, and just dealing with Vancouver numbers, although they, I think the situation, I'm sure the situation is just as bad across the whole country, but I happen to know the Vancouver numbers best. So guess what this is? <laughs> no, no fair, Greg, I think you know. <laughs> a new Boeing aircraft. <laughs> 767. That's the number of units of new social housing per year that were built in Vancouver in the 1980s. It's the average number, 767. So now we have the highest uh, housing prices in the country. The feds are basically out of social housing. The province is virtually out. They canceled housing projects in 2001. They have no program to build new social housing. All the housing coming on stream now in Vancouver, there's nine more buildings, are from commitments that were made in 2007, just prior to the Olympics, when they would have had a really bad um, image if they didn't do anything about housing. And uh, all the announcements that the housing minister makes, Rich Coleman, about housing are basically coming out of those announcements that he made in 2007, five years ago. Um, he did buy 1,500 units in the hotels, which was good, but the hotels are still crummy housing. They don't have bathrooms, they don't have kitchens, they don't make, meet earthquake standards, and they're not new. Now, I'm kind of um, irritated at the city, too, as you will tell. The city seems to be dealing only with housing for people who aren't poor. That's the mandate of their housing task force, which is supposed to be reporting soon. They talk endlessly about partnerships. Um, to me, partnerships translates into almost charity. It means the city donates the land. The developers, as a condition of rezoning, donate at the most one social housing unit per 10 condos. A charity might throw some dough in, and that's what we depend on for social housing. Um, and one example of this is a new housing for single parents above the new library in Strathcona. We fought hard for this, and the city manager put it together, and that's good. It's 20 units of welfare rate social housing for single moms who desperately need it, but guess what it's gonna be called? Well, it's almost like that. The Cuz We Care house. So imagine living in a place like that if you're a child. It's the stigma of relying on charity. And as Patrick said, housing is a basic human right and you can't really depend on charity for basic human rights. I think, I'm thinking that housing is gonna become like food and like poor people have to rely on food banks and groveling and getting shitty food. From, it's gonna be the same with housing. It's completely inadequate and stigmatizing. Also at the city level, homelessness is going up. According to the latest report, overall homelessness will increase by about 500 in the city between 2013 and 2014. And street homelessness will go up almost six times in those years. 
And that's because funding for shelters is going down and about 400 beds are losing their funding altogether. So one of the city's big actions on this front, which is really irritating to me, is to try to get the new buildings that are opening up to take a higher percent of people from the street and not from SROs or from hospitals. So at CAP, we think this is pitting the very poor against the very poor, and the city should just start going after the housing it really needs. 767. <laughs> and buying land for it, so senior governments know it's serious. The city isn't even dealing with the impact of gentrification in the downtown east side where gentrification is pushing up rents in the SROs, making them unaffordable to low-income people who have to have somewhere to go, and is taking no action on its own policy of replacing SROs with self-contained social housing. I was pleasantly shocked last week to learn in a conversation with a city housing planner that the city still says that it needs 790 new units of social housing every year. I was shocked because this isn't coming out of any of their material, at least not clearly. So last night I took the 790 units a year that the city says it needs, and I compared it to what we've been getting since 2005, which is using city numbers. That's the year that the city had its uh, homeless action plan. And so even if you add in the nine buildings that aren't built yet, uh, but that were committed in 2007, the city, guess how short the city is of social housing units just since 2005? 4,756. So no wonder we have homelessness, no wonder we have a housing crisis. We're 4,756 units short of what the city needs just since 2005. So on top of that, the operating agreements are running out. Maria talked about that. Uh, 25,000 units in Metro Vancouver over the next 25 year, 20 years, and a lot of co-ops are gentrifying already. Plus, we have governments cutting back on the taxes that corporations and the rich pay, and then saying, oh, we can't afford to pay for things like social housing. And we have a provincial election coming in less than a year, and an NDP who isn't saying anything about what they'll do until just before the election. I've met with them several times and this is their line. So I basically think that the concept of social housing is being killed off and our job is to keep it alive and if we don't act now, the idea of social housing will be dead and homelessness will start increasing again and more and more low income people will pay really huge portions of their income for social housing. And that's why we at the Carnegie Action Project are thinking that we need a social housing coalition could also fight for real rent control based on the unit, not on the person. So we could eliminate the lovely practice of rent evictions, and it could fight for controls on land speculation. So if anyone is interested, let me know, and we can set up a meeting. Um, another big, huge problem around housing is poverty, so I'm gonna make a shameless pitch for this Cost of Poverty Forum, which is on the 26th and there's a flyer on your seats, it's gonna be a sort of discussion, and not just talking heads, from a wide variety of people who are experiencing poverty and academics who've done the research about how it actually costs more to maintain poverty than to end it. And it's at the Grandview Church on Salisbury and First at seven on the 26th. And anyone who goes will also get to see the world premiere of this 610 diet video. So that's all I have to say. And if you want to help be part of a social housing coalition, come up and talk to me after and we can set up a meeting. Thanks. Thank you very much.